Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present REP Paranormal and Friends with your hosts, Kim Purvis and Allison Robinson. Live on Spreaker every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Join in on the conversation in the live interactive chat room on Spreaker.com or download the free app for devices. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any materials produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Good evening, everybody. Happy Thursday. This is Shay. I will be playing the role of Allison tonight. I am here with Kim, of course, the awesome host other half of REP, Paranormal and Friends, and the awesomest guest, Miss Casey Colburn. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm pretty good. Hello. Doing pretty good. How are you? Good. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Me too. So, everybody's just now joining us in the chat. So... See. Kay, do you wanna do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself before we get going? Um sure. So before I dove head first into the paranormal, I was a dog trainer for many, many years and working with animals was a big passion of mine. Um, it also ties into the first ability that I had, uh, first psychic ability that I had, at least had noticed, which was the ability to communicate with animals. And I've done that ever since I was very, very, very little. Um, and it was about a year ago that I really just kind of, because of the stress of working with animals, because unfortunately animals um, are looked at as just property. So until legislation uh, changes for that, it's just going to be kind of a very, very stressful field to work in. And it was, got to be too much for me. Um, so I went head first into the paranormal field and I've been here ever since and I've enjoyed it. Um, I've got a lot of projects that I'm happy to, to talk to you guys about. Yes, you, you have a lot of, lot of things going on. Definitely. Um, how long have you been in the field? I started about six years ago um, and it was just kind of like a recreational here and there type thing, just something for me and my sister to do together. Um, and then I really got into it about last, about March last year. And um, yeah, I, you know, I started asking how can I be more involved. And then I got involved with uh, Daniel Class, the owner of the Hinsdale House. And you know, it's my favorite place to investigate. So I can't think of anybody better to do this with. And I uh, started doing hosting events with him and I started that at the Crystal Ballroom which was a lot of fun. We had a really good turnout and it all benefited the Hensdale House. So that's that's really what got me going with all these projects and it's just kind of one right after another now. So what what's the Hensdale House like? I've heard some stories but So for me it I have a different view on it. Um, a lot of people just focus on the negative entities that are there and, you know, the the spooky story that everybody wants. You know, they a lot of people focus on that, but I see it differently. And that's why with my Gardens for Ghosts, um, I was able to bring in some of that positivity that I see to it because I think it's a beautiful place and I, I feel and I honor those spirits that are there that 
are good that are there to protect the place. And so that's that's what I focus on there. So. Are you um are you going in August? Because I know you had tickets for the last one with the Madison Paranormal. I should be there. I, I think Matt and I are going to be there. We're supposed to be, but because it got changed, we're not 1,000% positive, but... Yeah, that's about where I'm at. My August is pretty um, pretty solidly booked up uh, <laughs> with a lot of different things because of, because of the pandemic, um, but I'm going to definitely try to try to be there. So. Awesome. I will also be um, at Wild Woods at their event. It's not an investigation, but it's a, a psychic event. Um, I believe that's August 1st. Nice. I saw that. That looks good. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just did um, the garden that's there. So that, that'll be kind of excited to just see everybody go see it. And I don't know, maybe it'll help people go there. Maybe it'll be more... I don't know, inviting or something positive. I want positivity to come from it. So, how many how many gardens have you done so far, and how did you get the idea to start that gardens for ghosts? So I started actually just doing it for the Hinsdale, and then me and Dan got talking. We're like, you know, it'd be really cool if we can get to more locations, get you know, do this for more of the haunted locations. So it is only just for haunted locations that allow for paranormal investigations and, and things like that. It's not for like, you have a ghost in your house, I'm gonna come do a, a garden there. Cause unfortunately, <laughs> it's all donation based, so I, I can't afford that. Um, but that's how it got started. And now I've done one for Wildwoods um, and Greystone, but I've got um, burners going for Madison Seminary and um, the Lizzie Borden house. Yes. Yeah, so those are some hopefully upcoming projects that I'll be working on and I'm, I'm pretty excited um, if, if we don't this year because we're getting kind of towards the end of gardening season here um, then it'll just roll over to spring so. cool that's awesome yeah. um, before we get into all the other stuff um, so season two of Cauldron Talk with Casey Colburn starting in what less than a week yeah next wednesday i believe so that's pretty exciting yeah it's the first i know that i just don't know what today is yeah. so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah less than a week today's thursday see yeah it's so it's so surreal i didn't even know that i was really going to have a, a season one let alone now i'm having season two and i've had so many awesome awesome guests on and i've just it's been pretty cool yeah i love the show um, I'm so happy you're part of the Paranormal Buzz Radio um, network. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's great. It's it's different. It's fun. It's um, ed it's very educational too. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what really uh, is a big deal for me. You know, it's getting the right answers and stuff out to people because you can Google a lot of things. You're going to have five different answers for the same question. And that can be problematic. So uh, I'm trying to touch up on a lot of the, the stereotypes, the stigmas, the, um, you know, the negativity that surrounds a lot of the stuff that is in these fields um, and trying to kind of dispel it and give the correct information. You should always be cautious with whatever you're doing, but education has to come first. So before you, you know, really judge something, educate yourself you know do that research and then make a, a good educated you know guess as to whether or not it's for you or not instead of just judging it from its face value yeah, i agree i definitely agree um and a lot of go ahead a lot of people come to me with these questions and stuff and i'll sit and i'll think and you know i'll give them my thought which is usually well, I don't know too much about this, but this is what I suggest, which is educate yourself, you know, talk to somebody who's in whatever that field is or whatever uh, belief system that is, and then make up your own, but don't just, you know, judge it. So a lot of people do come to me with these things, and instead of just spreading that gossip or, you know, pushing people more and more into the negativity 
that surrounds whatever it is or their opinions. I just, let's figure it out. Let's actually learn this. And then if it does end up not to be your thing, that's okay too. Just move on. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a good idea. And um, for episode one, you have um, you have Dan Class. You have Rob. What's his last name? Thompson. Rob. Yep. Rob Thompson. Heather. Heather Boyler. And uh, Madison and David Smith. Yes. And we're going to be talking about kids in the paranormal field and. It's definitely, it was definitely kind of a, a touchy subject, uh, if you remember earlier in the year. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so it, it needed to be talked about. And, I mean, on my own team, I have, my, my nephew is only, he's turning 14 actually tomorrow. And he's such a wonderful asset to my team. Like, I, I couldn't imagine him not being on it. And I mean, the children, you know, with the right guidance, with all things, uh, they can be really, you know, they're open-minded, so that already right there is a big deal. You know, there's so many adults that aren't that way, and it blocks them from getting the answers or getting the spirit communication. And with him, he's he's super good at it. He's very intuitive, and I, this was a, a good topic. I think it needed to be discussed. Yeah, it definitely does, and I think you guys all know how I feel about it. I think each kid needs to be... Um, each kid should be judged individually whether they're ready. I don't think there's a certain age. It's all up to the kid. It's up to the parents. And as long as they have good role models, um, obviously I'm a supporter of Madison, Matt and I both. Um, she's on this network. So I I am so glad you're doing this topic. Yeah, and she's done such a wonderful, wonderful job. Honestly, I think she's going to be one of the, the top guys for the paranormal field. She's pretty much already there so I I applaud her and I, I want to see her continue yeah. yeah I think she will she's a, she's a great kid and she's she's got her head in the right spot when it comes to investigating so yeah she, we've investigated a couple of times with her yeah and I was real impressed with her yeah yep um, you mentioned your team K what is your team name um, it's the Supernatural Psychic Investigators. Um, it's just a, a small team. It's primarily me. Um, and then it's my sister, Samantha, my nephew, Tristan, and my husband, Douglas. Um, we Sometimes we'll have like a, a volunteer or guest investigator with us. It's usually a friend that's all, you know, very skeptic and, you know, wants to disprove things. But as long as they stay professional, they can come with us and we've had a pretty good time. We spend most of our time actually um, as a group at the Dunkirk Lighthouse. We do a lot of the volunteering for that uh, during the Paris season. And then myself, I, I spend a lot of time at the Hinsdale and all over the place. Yeah. You, um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just said I just had one of those moments. I like went to talk and I was reading at the same time, and everybody knows I can't do two things at once. Um, <laughs> I just try. You have so much going on. I'm trying to get a little bit out there before we really get into everything. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your? Excuse me if I get this wrong. I don't have anything in front of me. Yes, Matt Squirrel. That's me. Um, your is it C O P R? Yep, it's copper. Yep. So it's the Collective of Paranormal Research, and this is kind of a, a project that's still being worked on, um, but I'm actually working on it with Daryl Martson of a and Ghost Hunters, which is pretty cool. Um, we kind of came up with this concept all together, and we're just kind of building it now, but it's a forum. Um, if you go to, I believe it's copper-para.com. Um, you can sign up and vote on evidence that people submit. And if it gets enough reviews, enough people saying, yeah, this looks like it you know, could be something, then it'll go over to the judges, uh, our panel of judges, 
and then they'll have the, the final say. And then if it does look really, really conclusive, um, it'll go into our vault. So that way, you know, we're starting to kind of collect a, a database, if you will, of things that we're really trying to narrow down and look for. It's going to continue to grow. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you send us a thing and we're like, oh, I don't really know, it doesn't mean that there isn't anything going on in that photo. It just means it's not clear enough or, you know, conclusive enough to go into the vault because we can't host everything. It is just my own little, my own little server. So it can't take on everybody's. I wish it could, but we have to be kind of picky with it. So, yep. but it's it's a fun little thing. Um, it'll kind of I hope bring in people you know closer together in the para field, working towards a common goal, you know, of really filling up this this archive as much as we can. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds interesting. It yeah, it it was kind of it was kind of cool. Um, I get into a lot of the. I'm very spiritual, but I also like science a lot. So I've done things like I've got a working um, EMF experiment and an astral projection experiment, one that I did with um, BNP, Buffalo Niagara Paranormal. So shout out to those guys. Um, so, yeah, that, I do a lot of different scientific things. I, I really get into that. Can you, can if you can, I don't know if you can, do you want to tell us a little bit about those experiments? Okay, so the uh, we'll go with the we'll start with the EMF one. So basically, we're working with ions, and um, what you what devices you want to use is like a hygrometer and an ion tester. You can get both of those on Amazon for like sixty bucks total. Uh, if you want a really expensive ion tester, then you're looking towards like three grand. So it's not necessary. You don't need that one. Uh, <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so, so basically what you're looking for is the theory that I have is if there's enough water in the air, so that's what the, what the hygrometer will test is humidity, there's going to be an acceleration with the ions, okay, so with the positive ions, which then is going to accelerate electrons, which is what causes EMF, and then with that you're just it's just going to kind of trickle in so what it's basically saying is if there's a lot of moisture in there you could possibly be getting false positives with your emf detectors so if you use this you can kind of try to rule that out so like if you're outside and you get an emf spike and you're like wow that's amazing i've not ever where would i even get that i'm not around anything that's electrical well if you're next to anything that's holding a lot of water or maybe the you know it's just rained or something there is that possibility that you could get that spike still kind of organically so but if they're you know it's kind of like a, a double-sided coin so if there is no explanation with the atmosphere and you're not around anything else that could cause it then it's a little bit more of a phenomenon that doesn't mean that it's paranormal just means it's a phenomenon Gotcha. That's interesting. Yeah. So so there's there's a little bit more to it, and I probably missed some stuff there, but that that's I think that's the gist it. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So and then the astral projection one is a little bit different. Um, what we did to kind of set it up was I stayed home and I went into a meditative state. Um, BNP went to a location that I've never been to, and e Eagle Hotel, I think. Um, and PA, they're about six or eight hours away. Um, never been to it, didn't know anything about it. And we settled on, before they got there, we settled on a code word called dragon because I associate with that. That's what Kedra is. Um, and my objective was to travel to them and speak through their spirit box. And we actually, it was a success. They actually did hear the word dragon come through, and they heard, it's me, Kay. The weird thing is, is I was able to describe some of the objects that were in the area. And um, when I came back to and was trying to talk, my voice was kind of hoarse, as if I had been screaming, but I hadn't been. Um, astrally, I felt like it took a lot of energy to, you know, do that to come through the box, but yeah, so that, that was kind of a 
an interesting thing. Um, it's something that both things are, you know, we have to continue the experiments before we really say anything is right. definitive or conclusive. But it was a pretty, pretty interesting nonetheless, I think. Well, is that on video somewhere? Is that where, can people watch that? Any, either experiment? Yes. Um, you can go to my website, caseycolburn.com, and it should be right on there. Nice. Oh, we have a question in chat real quick before we get too far. Would humidity affect the EMF? Humidity alone doesn't affect it, but the what it causes with the the ions, that is what causes it. So you'll see you'll see more positive ions around bodies of water during uh, thunderstorms. Positive ions are like good air. That's what you want. Uh, or I'm sorry, no, I do have that flip. Negative ions are good. Positive ions are bad. I did have that flipped. So negative ions are the good air. That's like when you go into the mountains and you're like, and it, you know that's fresh air. That's good. Um, positive ions are like the pollutants and stuff, which is what EMF causes. Interesting. Yep. See, I wouldn't have even caught that you said it backwards. Yeah, I. it's because when you think the word positive, you think that means good, and it, right. it touches me every time. But no, it's it's backwards. So. Yeah. I, I barely remember that from science class. I didn't pay attention much in science, so. The, um, the Earth also, like, intermittently, randomly, like, puts off EMF. So you can just get it from that. Naturally. Uh, yep. one, of, one of the things, like, going more into EMF, you have to really pay attention to your surroundings because I've been into an area and I've seen somebody get really outstanding results on a K2 meter from the fire alarm. Every time the fire alarm blinked, it did too. So you have to really, really pay attention to your surroundings. <laughs> oh. I, yeah. Yep. That's, I, I'm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've seen that before too, so, but, um, yeah. The and ones I really love is they've got their cell phone right on yeah, top of the K2 and it's going I'm, off. I was thinking that too. Yeah, you know, you gotta, you really do need to be careful. Uh, yeah. You know. I like to work with a couple of different ones. The one that I do use the most is actually from Home Depot, um, and it, it's very directional, so you're supposed to, like, it's for working, like contractor work. So you're supposed to stick it right on the wall. And it has a sensor right on the top. Yeah. So it's very one-way direction. That's where it's coming from. So I, I like that because then I know things behind me and stuff aren't influencing it. Like if I'm holding something else, it, it shouldn't anyways. shouldn't be influencing it. When you're on an investigation and you have something happen, um, do you do – you only consider it when you have multiple things happening at once? That does bring a little bit more of the, you know, conclusions to, to it. Um, it really depends on what is happening. Um, at first and foremost, when I go into a location, I, I will try to open myself up and, you know, do my medium uh, abilities as much as possible to try to communicate. Um, I don't force anybody to communicate with me. I wouldn't do that to a living person. I'm not going to do it to a dead person. Um, and so if that's not working, then I, I'll usually really turn into my, my equipment and stuff. Um, I'm My biggest things that I use are just the recorder and my camera. And, and uh, I'll use dowsing rods. And I'll use a pendulum. Um, I use dowsing rods more than pendulum. Um, yeah, more. I guess more art school stuff. I don't really. I have like the spirit boxes and stuff, but I not a huge fan. Right. Um, so it's it's not my favorite, but they they can be a fan favorite. So like if people do want to see them being used, like I'll bring them out for people. But they're just not not a necessity for me on a investigation. What is your favorite piece of equipment? The recorder. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. I mean, I I do it differently than I think a lot of people, and 
it does get mundane having to go through everything, but I'll just set it down in a room that I know is going to be quiet and then walk away. And, you know, that means I'll have like 10 to 45 minutes worth of stuff I got to go through, but it's totally worth it. I've caught some really cool things. Oh, yeah, um, we I, use multiples. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember how many we had going when we did the cabin. One, two, three, four. I don't even, there was so many of them. We use some we carry with us, and some we just sit in a, sit down and leave it there. And so I I've got three that I sit somewhere, and then I've got the one I carry. Yeah. Mhm. Yep. Yeah, I uh, I I've got a lot of stuff that way. Uh, I don't. I like pictures, but they have to be clear. If it's just this blurry orb thing that I have to blow up to really try to see something. I don't consider it anything. Um, I do get I do get a lot of people that send me stuff like that, and I I try to take it very very seriously because they believe that there's something there. But I will tell them, you know, it's it's inconclusive. Um, I can't I can't tell if there is anything that's there. So unfortunately, there's a lot of a lot of that that comes out, but. That's why with like copper, like our, our stuff isn't what equipment you use because there's a lot of, that's a touchy topic on its own that will be part of my show um, is equipment. And that can cause a lot of fighting in the para field of what is better and what isn't. And um, so my, what our goal is for getting evidence is the, uh, is it clear audio? Is it clear video? Has it been altered? You know, is, you know, just taking it at its face value, what you're showing me, not what you used when you used it, not anything like that, because I just want the facts. This is what I'm looking at. This is what I see. So if, I, if it's too blurry to tell that there is something there, then it leaves room to say that maybe somebody bumped the camera as it, you know, was taking the photo or something, you know, that makes it inconclusive. Yeah, I used to get a lot of pictures, and I I, I don't anymore, but I think I, it's because I made my point finally after how many years <laughs> of saying, please don't send me your pictures because even if it looks great, I'm not going to, because I don't know the room. I don't know what's outside the frame of what I'm looking mm -hmm. in the picture. I don't know what's reflecting. I don't know who else is in the room. I don't know. So, yeah, they don't they don't send them too much. Yeah, and, like, the same thing with, like, audio. Like, I like it to be clear. I mean, I know that we're not going to get class A's all the time. I understand that. But it, it, if you blow it up and try to make me see something, like, in the matrixing of, or the pixelization of the picture, I have a very overactive imagination. So, yeah, I can definitely, I'll find thousands of faces, but that doesn't mean it's paranormal. Exactly. And I just, I can't make it be paranormal. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a nice person. I'm sure you have a hard time telling people that, too. It can be. I mean, there's definitely been, I have. I guess, it's easier to tell family and friends, hey, no, that's not what yeah. you're, you're looking at. But it can be difficult, yeah. I try to, you know, not break their hearts, with, you know, because they're excited. I'm sure they're excited that they caught something. Yeah. Um, so I just try to encourage them to keep trying, try to get that, you know, closer to class A as possible. And one day they'll get it. I mean, how many, how many things did we get that was just candid? So, you know, you don't have to be a expert or a professional and, and, you know, in quotations there, uh, <laughs> to, to get the, the class A's. Yeah. What is the best EVP you've ever caught? It was actually, uh, Doug actually caught it. Um, we were at the Hinsdale house, and we heard, or on the recorder we heard, but we were all at the point of the investigation where people start talking, and as you guys may have heard, the Hinsdale house doesn't quite like it when you ignore it. Yeah. Um, and so we're all women upstairs, okay, all of us. And Doug's the only guy, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard Doug talk, but it's not really a gruff voice at all. Um, so it, it's definitely not him. But we hear on the recorder, I hate them all, in a very deep man voice. And it 
clear, like, to me it's very clear, I hate them all. And that was enough to make him so he's not so skeptical. <laughs> so, he's also been growled at there, too. We, we've got a couple of growls. So That's always fun, huh? Mm-hmm. So, he, I don't know, he seems to have a, that more negative uh view on it because of how things are. He doesn't really like to go into the house. But me, I I give thanks. I give my respects. I, you know, I'll do sweet grass offerings and uh, Palo Santo and Sage. Not to cleanse, but for um, an offering. I'll do that at the base of the hill before you get up to the tree. And um, maybe that's why I have a better experience there. I don't know. I can't figure that out. Why one person has positive and one will have a negative? I is it their perspective? Is it um, the the spirit or spirits choosing who to show what to? I have so many questions about that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I definitely you know I, I still am cautious. I'm still you know it's a like a mutual respect type deal. I yeah. that I have. It's I'm not going to be afraid of it, but I'm not going to push it either. Yeah, if he's afraid of it, that could affect it, too. Mm -hmm. We got a question. Mama Deb wants to know, do you prefer knowing the history of a place or not? Um, That depends. So if I'm, like, when I was just starting, I was using this to, like, kind of refine my, my psychic abilities. So I liked knowing what I was walking into. Um, and when I'm with my sister or my nephew, I like knowing what I'm walking into. But if it's just me, that now that I am a little bit more experienced, I know what I'm doing a little bit more, I don't mind so much if I don't know. That's, that's pretty good. Um, check and chat real quick. Okay. Make sure I didn't miss any. I, um... I'm waiting. Let's see. Nope. Nope, we Got don't. All. all right. Well, keep going then. Um, so, what do, you, go what ahead. do you think about the phone apps that people phone apps, use? I'm kind of hit and miss. I don't, I don't know too much about them. I like the idea of them. Um, I do, I do have the Spiritus app on my phone, um, but I don't know how credible it is. So it's just more like a something fun to mess around with, I suppose. I don't use it for actual like documentation of the paranormal. Right. What is the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on an investigation? The funniest. Like out and out funniest. Hmm. That's a hard one. I don't know that I've had. I mean, watching people get scared is it could be kind of funny. Um, I grew up doing haunted houses, so I have grown a, a humor for that. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely watching the scare jumps um, or you know people's shock faces when they you know they're listening to the the spiritist or the the spirit boxes and there's their name comes up. I, I like seeing their, their faces for that. Um, but nothing, I don't think anything that's spirit can do stuff that's really funny that like they're kind of ironic I suppose. Yeah. So my spirit guides, it's not really an investigation but like if I don't listen to them like actually the other, when I was doing the Hinsdale Garden they're like bring, I have one of those thermocell things um, they're, they keep bugs away and they're like, bring that with you. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to. So I, I left at home. Well, the whole day I was fighting gnats off me the whole day. <laughs> and so I, I find that kind of funny, you know, cause it's like, yeah, you were right. I should have done that. Um, so they, they can be kind of, you know, go kind of goofy like that. Um, the, Something that's not spooky or scary that did happen to me at the Hinsdale was I saw the spirit of Cat, and he left me a little mouse toy in the middle of the doorway, where, like, if we were to be coming in, 
we would have definitely stepped on it or kicked it or noticed it. And um, I saw him come up and go into Laura's room. And everybody else that was in that room with me said, no, 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 there's no cats here. There's no spirit cats, you know, all this. So I hopped it alone. I was like, okay. But because I love animals, I got super excited to see the cat. And um, so, you know, I checked under the bed and stuff just to, just to be sure to do that investigative part. And no, no cat. So I was like, okay. So I sat back down. And then when we turned our flashlight on, that's when we saw the cat toy right there in the middle of the doorway, which I think is, that's, it could be kind of funny, but it's, to me, it's just a really, like, cool. That is cool. Cool appreciation moment, you know, like, it acknowledged me, I acknowledged it, so. That is cool, because obviously you would have seen it when you walked in. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it was right there at the top of the stairs, like, where that, where the room starts. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I like that. Of course you would attract animals. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Let's see. Go ahead. I'm having headphone troubles. Okay. Mama Deb wants to know, do you prefer commercial or residential investigations? Um, it depends on what I'm, what I'm doing. So those are two different things for me. I don't, so the commercial places are for like kind of like fun Mm -hmm. while still documenting um and the residential is to help that person so it's a little bit different and i if i can't help that person i I try to find somebody that can yep that's good yeah and i um just want to kind of mention on that too like it's okay to like acknowledge that you can't help that person don't try to put ego first and make things worse for that person Right? Yep. Exactly. Because I see a lot of that sometimes, too. So It's a, it's a lot of pride, I, you know, if you can't. I see that. You can't help everybody. There's always somebody smarter or knows more about certain things than you, no matter who you are. So mm-hmm. I think asking for oh. help or admitting that you don't have the answers or you can't do it is actually a sign of strength and a sign Mm -hmm. of security in yourself and who you are when you can say, I don't know, let's go ask somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I definitely, like, I know that I know a lot about the paranormal stuff and what I'm doing when I'm, like, if I go into a residential case and they need, like, a house blessing or, you know, a mild cleansing or something like that. I know what I'm doing and I'm confident in it, but I'm not going to take on something that's extremely heavy, you know. Right. I'm not going to be like, well, I've done these little things, so obviously I can do the big things now. It's it's not how it is. It's not how it works. No, you're going to work up to it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And if what your ego is saying out outwardly doesn't match what actually feels inside, so you're, you're having a lot of doubt inside, but you're saying, yeah, 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 I can do it, I can do it, that's going to cause a lot of issues in the end because that, that opens a big door, you know, any, any little bit of doubt. So, um I've been told many times that if you're going to do this type of work, you have to be and completely sure that you're the scariest thing in the room. Yeah. So that's that's a, a big part of this. Yeah. I agree. I like how you explain that, too. If your ego is saying stuff on the outside that doesn't match what you're feeling in, etern- internally, I almost said eternal, um, internally, yeah, you're going to have problems. I like that. That is very smart, Kay. Casey, sorry, I'm not supposed to call you Kay. Okay. That's all right. That's, that works, too. Just call me Hey You. Hey You. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> I was trying. I was trying. Yeah, yeah our, our group, we've got three other teams that we work together with if we do a residential so we'll go in, and then if we can't handle it, the, I know the others can, so we always bring them in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good way yeah. to go about it. Yeah, I've only worked on a couple around here because it's not like a terribly big thing on this area. I'm sure there are cases they are just not open about them, or maybe they just don't know that they can be open about them. Uh, but I've only worked on a couple, um, and, yeah, nothing nothing really big and scary you know it's unfortunate I'm 
I don't run into the demonic cases, I guess, like some of the, the shows that you see. It's not every episode. Um, but, right. <laughs> but I kind of prefer I kind of prefer it that way. So. Look, there's a fly. It must be a demon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I laugh, but yeah, I I do believe there's demons out there. I be, you know I'm Catholic, so. Um, but I think the percentage is so small that um, if you're being possessed every episode, there's an issue. Yeah, I think I think it's a not as likely thing unless you're really bringing that into yourself. You know, you're opening yourself up to that. You're wanting that. You're willing it. Then there's a little bit more involved. Um, but I don't think every household comes standard with one. No. So. No. Because I think I would have run into way more than by now. So. Right. I've never. I think we all would have. <laughs> I've never even come across anything negative. I mean, assholes. I've come across grumpy asshole spirits that, mm -hmm. you know, they were probably like that in life, and now they're like that in death, but nothing negative. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I've, I've come across, like, stronger entities that um, could do negative things if they wanted to, if they're provoked. Um, yeah. But, again, I just try not to do that. It's a it's a simple thing. You just don't just don't do that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like if I shove the person, they're probably gonna shove me back, and I can't be like, oh, right. I didn't expect that to happen, because that's kind of silly. So, and another thing too, the kind of that I, I really like connecting what I know about the animal field with with this stuff. So, if you go into a, like a room with a dog, and say, we'll say it's a pit bull because that's got a huge stigma on it. So you say, you walk into a room and you're like, oh my God, it's Pipple, I'm going to get bit. Well, that dog is going to be like, wow, I'm picking up on these vibes. Who's getting bit? I'm going to bite you first before you bite me. Same thing, if you walk into a house and you put that vibe off, like, I know I'm going to get scratched, I know I'm going to get scratched. They're going to be like, wow, I need, to, I need to get you to get out of my area before you do something else because something's not right about this vibe. And so you're going to get scratched. Or how, oh. about, how about you sitting there saying, touch me, move this, show me your hair, show me any sign. And the whole time they've been slapping you on the shoulder, or tapping you on the shoulder, or poking you. And so they really try and then they leave a mark. Maybe it wasn't mm -hmm. on purpose, but you kept asking and they finally were able to show you and it connected a little harder. Mm -hmm. That's just, so. I think about weird yeah. stuff. Yeah, and like with the, uh, if they do work with EMF, uh, electricity can burn you. So if they really pump up enough energy and then brush past you, that can cause, I could see that causing a burn. Because if you brush past like an open um, electricity wave, you're going to get some sort of burn or static or, you know, something is going to happen. I never so. thought of that. Yeah, so I don't. It, I don't think it always has to be this like malicious intent. You know, they're not out to get you. Because I think if they really wanted to get you, they would have in the beginning. Yeah. You know. So, it would have done something more than left three scratches. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. So, um, I'm still. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Did we miss any questions yet? Nope, I got them all, I think. Um, I know what I haven't asked yet. I, I was just going to look it up, but I don't have to. I can I remember. Your apprenticeship. I don't even know how to say the word. I'm sorry, Kay. Oh, yeah. With I'm, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I'm apprenticing with Brian Cano, or under Brian Cano, and um, that's been a lot of fun. It's been well, well worth it. He just a huge well of knowledge, and it's awesome that I get to, to learn from him. Um, we're covering a lot of stuff on parapsychology right now, which, for those who don't know, parapsychology is not the study of the paranormal, but of psychical abilities. So that's, or abilities of the mind. And so that's pretty cool. Um, that's one of the first things that I, I learned from him. And, yeah. Because when, when you think parapsychology, you think paranormal, but no. No, it's not. 
It uh, oh. comes from PSI, right? How do you say I that? Yeah. Now, he's from... It, it's... Um, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, paranormal caught on tape? Paranormal caught on camera. Yes. Camera. Okay. Yes. I knew... I yes. knew it's gonna. And he up. was on the Haunted Collector too. Yes. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. And he had his own show, uh, Scared on Staten Island, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, he's he's done a lot of lot of stuff. He's learned from a lot of people, a lot of years of experience, and it's it's pretty cool that I'm I'm able to learn from him. So. That is very thankful for that. All right. Here's a tough question for you. This will be my hardest question of the night. Maybe. Is there anything in the paranormal that you don't have a foot in, that you haven't <laughs> dipped your toe in? Because you are, you do so much, <laughs> and I mean that in a positive way. You do so much good, but you have a little bit of everything going on. So where do you find time? Right. <laughs> so, okay. So, I don't do so much with cryptids as I'd like to. Um, but you do have an interest in it. You've done a little bit, right? Yep, a little bit. See? But not, not, as, not as much as what I'd like. Um, I'm fortunate in the fact, well, some. I'm fortunate in the fact that I don't have to work um, because Doug does all that for me, so I don't have to. Um, so I have a lot of time that I can dedicate to all this stuff. Um, and so I try to, I mean, just because I don't have, like, a physical job that I, I go to, I definitely work enough hours that it could be considered a job. Um, <laughs> Amen. I feel you. So, um, but no, he, he doesn't like for me to, to work. Not because, like, of, you know, he's a man, whatever, but because I do have a lot of uh, medical issues and stuff. Like, uh, in 2010, I was in a bad accident, and it, it's still doing stuff, so... He just kind of lets me live a, a stress-free life and do what I want. So that's it's pretty lucky. And actually, today is our 11-year anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary to Casey, Casey yeah. and to Douglas. Thank you. Oh. Um, and while we're speaking of your home life, how many dogs do you have? And then go into the rest of the animals. Just because she's a dog lover, animal lover, and she does a lot of stuff for animals. So. Yeah, so... I have a mini zoo, and they take up most of my time, which is also probably a good reason why I don't have a job because it does take a lot of time. Um, but I, because it's not just like clean and feed, it's like you have to do things with them. Um, so I have five dogs, and they're all Australian Shepherds. So my house is crazy, um, but I love them to death. And they're <laughs> big. They're big, yeah. Well, one, one's a mini. One's a oh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, he's the newest one. He's feistier than the rest, but yeah, he, I love him. His name is R2D2. Oh. Um, and then I have eight cats. All of them are rescues. They, people drop them off. I live on an alleyway, uh, two, like two alleyways, and people um, just drop off their cats. And so, you know, they're supposed to be indoors and they know they're supposed to be indoors it's hard to see them try to be a feral cat so I take them in I get them all that they need to do and that's that's that uh, and then I have chinchillas I have three macaws which also keeps the house interesting and I have a bearded dragon do they oh, swear have, oh go ahead what I have rabbits too rabbits yes so the um the one does swear, thanks to my brother. What? He babysat for one one weekend, and now he swears. He hasn't taught um, the others to swear yet. No, but they do. They do say all sorts of stuff. Um, they say, <laughs> you know, they say hello. Um, Nana, she sings the happy birthday song. Um, he, Odin likes to say "rar" and "peekaboo" a lot. He's quite funny about that though, because he'll say "peekaboo" like three times in a row. And then he'll say peek a butt and laugh so hard. <laughs> that is funny. Nico in chat says, dang, that's a zoo. I like to call it 
What's that R word? A rescue. A rescue. Uh, I had the word until I started laughing. Um, uh, uh, I'll come back to it. Ugh, I can't think of the word. You know, where they yeah. go, where they save the animals and they put them all in the same place. And, um, oh, reserve? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I... Go ahead, I, I'll think. I, uh, I don't recommend, you know, that anybody just do this. It, it does not... It takes, I think, a crazy person to do this, um, but it's well worth it. And I, I do everything in my power. You know, they come first. So their needs, whatever it is, comes first. And, and, and for the listeners, just so you know, it's not like she lives in this little one, one room apartment or anything. She, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I own my own house, and you know, we we do pretty good. We take care of them and. Yeah. Everybody's happy, healthy, and safe, and they will have a happy home for their entire life. So yeah. that, that means a lot to me. So, like, the macaws are all rescues, um, and macaws, like any bird, they're, they don't take to being rehomed easily. And these poor guys have already been rehomed quite a few times. So they're with me, no matter how annoying their screeches and screams get, because that does get very loud. Uh, they're still, you know, they're... They're with me to the end, so and probably longer because macaws can live, you know, a hundred years. So yes, can you imagine if I had one of them? Can you imagine what that what that bird would be saying? <laughs> I've been good on this show tonight, though. I've been good lately. Yes, you did. I I'm, I've been trying to cut back the swear, and I don't know why. It just probably because I don't have energy to think up funny swear words anymore. <laughs> yeah, I um. Yeah, working with animals, like, it, it's been my life dream. Like, I I um, ended up having, I did most of um, an online course for um, veterinary assistant diploma or degree. I can't remember which one it was. Um, so I did go through all that. I just couldn't complete it because, unfortunately, I didn't have health insurance at the time. So... I couldn't complete it because you have to have that plus the rabies shot and all that to, to do the internships. Uh, um, yeah, it goes into a lot of stuff. Um, I've looked into doing um, like a wildlife rehabilitation thing because people bring me their animals every now and then. Um, like I like wild animals. Like I, I had so this lady bring me a bunch of wild rabbits. And I did a first for that, actually. So at least the first for this area, the the rehab in this area didn't you ever hear about anybody doing so it's very very sad um in the springtime when you find the nest of baby rabbits and then you remove them because the mother rabbit thinks that they're all deceased and she screams for quite a few nights after that uh-huh. um and i because this lady made me take these rabbits because she didn't want her dog to get them I knew that, and it just, it was killing me to know that this mother is grieving so badly over this. And so I was like, well, I'm going to set up a have a heart. We're going to try to catch her. We'll see how it goes. And I, you know, I talked to the rehab lady that I was working with, and she's like, yeah, you can try that. And, um, and I caught her. And (laughs) then I was like, well, okay, I've done this with feral cats, but I've never done this with a wild rabbit. Now what? Now I'm, I'm screwed. I just got this rabbit and must have a heart now. And um, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to do what I would do with a feral cat. What's it going to do to me that a feral cat wouldn't do? So I opened it up and, you know, where she could go into, I have a, like, I had a rabbit pen, um, not with my rabbits, but a separate one. And... I, I put her babies in there first so she could kind of see. I, you know, made sure that it was her. So I figured if it wasn't her baby, she would try to attack. And that can be very gruesome how rabbits do that. So I, you know, kind of made sure to socialize them first before I just opened it up and let her in. And everything was calm, so I let her in. And it went, like, super, super smoothly. And I don't think I've ever had more of an adrenaline like rush in my entire life because I know that if it was a feral cat it would have popcorned all over the room I would have probably lost bones right 
<laughs> or and an I. Yeah. So and you don't think cats can do that, but yes, they they can. So. <coughs> yeah, they yeah they can. So I see we have uh, two more questions in there, Kim. Yep, I was waiting till she got done. Okay. Uh, Mom and Dad wants to know: Do you think animals can be aware of spirits being present? I do. I think that they're uh, naturally intuitive. You know, they have to kind of have that hypersensitivity um, for survival. So I think they definitely can. Um, I think that too is where a lot of our like intuitiveness comes from too is the, that hypersensitivity. And the next question is, how do you feel about the idea that kids' imaginary friends could be spirits? I think that it depends on the situation, but it is a possibility. I, uh, me and my niece, uh, Cynthia, we actually had shared a imaginary friend. Her name was Peaches, Aww. and she was a like eight or ten year old girl that actually died in the apartment that we were living in. Oh. Uh, yeah, her, it, it's kind of a, a sad story. She was well, waving out the window of the second, of our apartment, which was the second story, uh, to her dad. And her little brother, who was only like two or three at the time, you know, grabbed a hold of her, which scared her, which then she ended up falling to her death. Um, but her name was Peaches, and we, we actually ended up finding out all this information. But at first they just thought, this is just an imaginary friend. They didn't think anything of it. But then she started waking us up at night. Um, they would hear laughing when everybody else is asleep. Um, when we went to move, she actually knocked all of our dishes off from the counter because she was getting upset that we were leaving. So, And uh, my dog, Savvy, she would actually react to her, too. Makes me sad. Yeah. You want to ask the running question, Shay? Yes, yes. Um, Darren is not here tonight in chat, but we ask it anyways. All right. Ready, Kay? Mm hmm And there's no wrong answer. There's no answer too dirty after every other show that has done this. You will not imagine. You can't even imagine some of the answers that we've gotten. So, what is the one object in the world you would never want to be haunted? My coffee. Oh, <laughs> I think that's a new one. It is it, a girl after my own heart right there. Oh, yeah. I think if my coffee was floating away from me, I'd be I'd, I would worry for others. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's funny that, that I think I think that's the first time for that one. Yeah, I like it, though. I'm writing it down yeah. so I can remember to tell him. I, he, I don't even have to. He does. Whenever he misses a show, he does go back and listen. Yeah. He really does. So, um, yes, that was good timing, Ma. Um, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna start wrapping up here. Kim, do you have any more questions? Nope. I think, uh, I think we've got them all covered. I, that I checked them off as we were covering them. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that was very fun. Um, I'm gonna. You want to do the shout outs or you want me to? I got the shout outs. Okay. We had uh, Mama Deb in there, Nico, uh, Kim, Matt, Shay, Allison, and I have the beholder towards the end came in. He's another one that listens um, yep. in the background. Um, so. I made sure we're wrapping up. It is 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock for you, Kim, yep. but eight, 9 o'clock for us. But because because our good friend Casey here has so much social media to announce that I figured we'd give her a few extra minutes. Yep. So, Kay, you want to tell everybody where we can find you and on what thing, what group? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so there is quite a lot. Um, so you can find, you can, on Facebook, you can go to uh, Cauldron Talk with Casey Colburn. Um, on Twitter, it's at Talk Casey. Um, and then I have Copper in Facebook, which I think you should be able to find it easily just by 
typing in C-O-P-R. Um, Gardens for Ghosts. Um, on Twitter, it's just Gardens for underscore, because I don't know how to change that. <laughs> and then on Facebook, it's just Gardens for Ghosts. And I... It's all, is all of this on your um, website? It's all on my... Yep, all on my website. You want to so throw that w back w out there, too? Sure. So, www.caseycolburn.com. See? Okay. It's oh, and it's Casey is K A Y C E E, and then Colburn is C O L B U R N. That, see, she knows me so well, she's telling you guys how to spell it in case I typed it wrong in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Which I wouldn't put it past me. So, um, so yeah, next Wednesday, July 1st, make sure you check out episode one of season two um, Cauldron Talk with Casey Colburn right here on Paranormal Buzz Radio. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central. And if you missed last season, start checking it out. You don't know what you're missing. She has awesome guests, awesome information. She does a fantastic job. It's really good. Yep, thank you. So, All right, is that it, Kim? We all set? That, that is it. I don't have my calendar, so I don't know who we have next I do. Week. Kevin Killian is back for round two. Oh. Author of Ghosts okay. of Me. I just made the banner yesterday, so I remembered. Okay. You know more than I do. <laughs> See? No. I just happened to remember. Um, so that was, that was convenient, huh? All right. Yes. See? I did something good. I helped. <laughs> thank you guys for having me um, I enjoyed this um, everybody if I don't if you don't mind tomorrow is one of the last lives I'm doing for the summer so join me tomorrow night at 8 Eastern I have um, India and Connor um, of paranormal encounters I have one more live I think um, coming up sometime in July other than that they're gonna all be pre-recorded I'm taking some time off um, thank you, Nico. I know. I'm awesome, huh? Um, just kidding. Um, I'm taking some well-deserved time off. So, But I, I have some great guests coming up. So make sure you check them out, too. So I will see everybody tomorrow. I know I'll talk to Kim tomorrow. So. Oh, and before, before we leave, we all need to uh, send some healing out to Roland and Cynthia from Raven Rose. We need to pray. Yes, really pray to whoever, whatever um, God, goddess, whatever you believe in, they yes. need, he is fighting for his life, and um, I'm not exaggerating, so please, um, please keep them in your thoughts, keep them in your heart, um, it's a very sad situation. And they need all the positivity they can get, they're great friends of this network they've been on so many of the shows we've all been on their shows um so yeah please please so. and i thank you thank you good night everybody good night